Hello everyone, something a little bit different today. You've seen me using this type of jig in the past in some other videos to hold jobs this way or that way. It is very important that uh, I use something like that because especially when you make two-sided jobs, you have to make sure that they line up perfectly in both axes on your machine and when you turn them over that you get exactly the same zero point so very important that the jig is actually completely square compared to the machine but also that the zero point that you've measured there is very accurate so you can reference to the lower left corner of the piece when you turn it over because if you have a difference um, and you don't have the right zero then your piece will not be the two sides of your piece will not be aligned so what we see today is how to make such jig how to make sure that it's exactly perfectly aligned both horizontally and vertically and how to make sure that you actually reference the zero point as precisely as possible there in the corner um, also how to cut that small hole there to make sure that you don't have dust collecting in a corner which would make your piece you know not fit completely in the corner and it could move around and not be very precise so i'll make a new one you'll see that if you've seen my other videos i have a new wasteboard that i made last weekend so i will make a new jig for that new wasteboard um, which is reference to it so let's start we will make the new jig with this cutoff of the wasteboard that I made and there are different things that we're going to do to make sure that we have the best alignment possible. The first thing is that we are going to drill the holes to attach the jig to the wasteboard. Uh, of course we're going to drill those holes with the CNC. I know that I have exactly 75 millimeters between the holes in both directions so it's very easy to create the holes in the new one with the CNC and make sure they fall perfectly. And uh, another thing we will do, we will also attach the jig to the machine. We will reference the zero point first on the piece. We will note the um, absolute coordinate of that zero point and we will write it on the jig. So every time we reuse the jig, we use the same zero point. Of course, we will have to screw the jig on the wasteboard exactly at the same place. Okay, so let's start by clamping this piece on the wasteboard. We don't have to be particularly um, square by clamping that, we'll do our best, but it's okay. What will be important is that the piece that we will cut out after, this one will be very square to the rest of, of the board. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, first drill the holes to attach the board to uh, the wasteboard, to attach the jig to the wasteboard, and then once it's fixed to the jig, we're going to cut this part which is going to be cut by the machine once it is attached with its own screws definitive holes to the board uh, so we are sure that what we cut off here is exactly square because it's cut by the machine with the piece in the exact position where it will be when it is used as a jig we'll also use a zero point somewhere here uh, and we will write down the coordinates the absolute coordinates of that point it will be our zero point later when we uh, are going to use the jig but for the moment we're just going to drill holes at seven, 75 millimeters intervals to attach the jig to the wasteboard then we will attach the jig with its uh, definitive screws and we will cut the rest so the rest will be exactly square So this is the overall design of the jig. We will start by drilling those four holes that will hold the jig in place after on the wasteboard. For those we will use a reference point, zero point here on the uh, lower left corner of the jig. Not very important to be precise now, it will be important to be precise when we drill, we reference the zero point, where we go. that's going to be the zero point of the jig itself when we use it later. But for the moment we'll just drill the hole. Um, and I will use those six millimeter screws 
not sure you will see them right on the camera there as you see they have a tapered head I don't use flat head screw what what why do I use those ones it's because when they're going to screw into the board they're going to automatically put the uh, center of the hole exactly at the center of the screw because of the taper in the screw No, we need to cut that part off. We could do it right now, but the problem is that we will remove a part like that, okay? We want to know exactly where the zero point here is. So we could do it that way, and then we know where the zero point is, but then this jig will be attached to the wasteboard, not at the same place than it actually is. So what we need to do is first attach the jig to the wasteboard exactly where it's going to be where we will use it as a jig and then reference the zero point. This means that every time we attach the jig to the wasteboard exactly at the same place we know exactly where the zero point of that jig is. So I'm going to remove the jig from those clamps, attach it to the wasteboard and cut the rest once it's attached to its definitive position on the wasteboard. So by using those tapered head screws, we know that the jig is exactly at the same place every time as the taper will center itself, well, will center the jig automatically around itself. So now we're going to reference the zero point and remove that part. And what we're going to cut here, as the jig is going to stay exactly at the same place every time, is going to be perfectly, perfectly squarely aligned with the machine. So we've cut these holes these four holes with a zero point at the lower left of the jig. What we want to do is make the cutout here but to reference exactly that zero point of the cutout so we're going to use an offset of the zero point for v-carve and this offset will be the lower left corner of the cutout of the jig. So the cutout at the moment is at 60-70 so what we're going to do, we're going to change the material properties or job setup so we use an offset for the zero points at minus 60, minus 70. No? Yes, of course, we want to recalculate the toolpath. There we go. So now our zero point is exactly there. And this is very important because we're going to write down that zero point on the jig and every time we use the jig as it will be fixed exactly at the same place on the wasteboard, we can reference that zero point very easily by moving the machine to those coordinates before setting it to zero. So I'm going to join those two pieces together. You remember we cut a small rounded figure there so we don't have dust that sets in the corner of the cutout when we place or pieces in the jig. So let's join those. There we go. And we're going to make a toolpath. We're going to cut 19 millimeters. That's the thickness of my MDF piece inside of the design. This is the zero point of the new toolpath. What's now very important is that I'm going to look at the absolute coordinates of that point. This is the, the, the job coordinates and I'm going to change that, look at the machine coordinates and this is exactly where the zero point of that jig will be. So we can reference it every time later on because the jig will sit exactly at the same place on the wasteboard so we can reuse that and we know it's exactly the lower uh, left corner of that cutout that we've made.
So, how do we use our new jig? The first thing to, thing to do is to fix it exactly at the same place. So, by using those tapered screws, if I use the same holes in my waste boat, I will be exactly at the same place I was before because the taper in the screw will center the hole of the jig. That's the first step. Now we know that as we have cut this cutout with the jig fixed the same way on the waist board, we know this is exactly square and parallel with the sides of the machine. What we need to do is to find all zero again. How do I do that? The first step is to home the machine as we do each time we switch the machine on. The machine will follow its automated homing procedure and will automatically go at zero zero. Machine zero zero, of course, not job zero zero. As you can see, if I go to the machine coordinates, I'm now at zero everywhere. Now remember that we wrote the machine coordinate of the jig zero point on the jig itself. Now I'm going to jog the machine either manually, automatically or with the macro to these points. Now that the machine is at the zero of the jig, which is those absolute coordinates on the machine, then I go on my material and there I can set my zeros they were already there because we just created the jig before but now I have exactly the same time exactly the same zero point and I can reference that every time I put something in my jig now if I want to put a piece in the jig I generally use those clamps that I've made out of plywood I often have to use shims as, of course, I only have holes for the clamps every 75 millimeter. And this one I need to move it a little bit. There we go. I use a soft hammer to make sure that my piece is stuck to the bottom of the jig and to the top of the wasteboard. Sometimes I will use an additional flat clamp like this one just to make sure that my round clamps do not move, especially if I have a long job. And there we go. That piece is perfectly square, I know exactly where my zero point is and I can repeat that every time. 